Hello, treasure seekers. Welcome back. Miss Sherry here. It's good to see you here. Week eight. Can you believe that? Eight weeks. Wow, a lot of lessons we've been learning together. Only four left. Summer has gone whew, so fast. But I hope you really have enjoyed our lessons. I have enjoyed teaching my part of the lesson. You know, I always like to start with a quick review to see what you can remember. So let's go over our jewels, our heavenly jewels. And where do they come from? Where? Where, where do we get these ideas? The Bible. God's precious book. All these jewels we learn and we see from the Bible. It's a wonderful book. So what was the first week? Do you remember? It was the blue jewel. It was on forgiveness. What was next? Pink. Love love next green jewel his own faith the next one was red it was on the bible god's holy word what was next? The yellow one. It was on obedience. The next one. It was like a diamond, clear and shiny. It was on peace. Last week, purple. Patience. Wow, can you see all of our jewels? We're getting a lot. And today we have a new lesson. It's orange. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful color. And what does it represent? Prayer. Prayer. What does that mean, prayer? Well, you know when we talked about the Bible, God talks with us or speaks to us through the Bible, His Word. But when we talk with God, that's prayer. Isn't it wonderful, though, that God speaks to us through the Bible and that we can speak and communicate with Him through prayer. And just think, God always answers our prayers. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says wait. But he is faithful. He never refuses to answer. And to think, God, we have a wonderful God that listens to all of our prayers. I think that is a wonderful jewel. Now, we only have one person, Douglas Croker, and he sent his video in and also another one, a second one from a couple of weeks ago. So thank you, Douglas, for sending in your videos. Now this week, we have two verses you can pick. The first one, maybe our young people would like to send this one in. Pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 17. An easy verse, pray without ceasing. We are to continually pray. Every day we need to pray to God, to talk with God. 
and tell him about our feelings and our, our burdens that we have and just to communicate with him. Our second verse, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Luke chapter 11, verse nine. These are two wonderful verses. Again, if you wanna copy me, the first one, pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. And the second one, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Luke chapter 11, verse 9. Here's where you send in those videos. Harvest Kids Sunday School 20. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here again. This week's treasure, Mrs. Chevalli was just talking about it, is about prayer. And we need to take some time to pray and just talk with God. And we can do that through prayer. God he always hears us. And it doesn't matter what's happening, he's gonna hit listen. And he doesn't always answer with a yes, but he will give an answer. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and sing a song. And it's called Standing in the Need of Prayer. And I'm gonna sign it, Needing Prayer, like this, okay? All right, let's go ahead. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. All right, thank you. Now I'm gonna give on the story to Miss Ruth. Bye, see you next week. Hello, my name is Miss Ruth. This is my sign name. Now I have a wonderful story for you about what? Prayer. Our treasure right now is prayer and that is an important the most important treasure why because g prayer is how we talk to god we can communicate with god through prayer i have a story about a man that man his name is george Mueller. He knew Jesus as his savior. He was a preacher. He lived in a different country named England. He lived in a town that was called Bristol, England. That town had many children. And George noticed when he would walk every day he would see the children and he noticed that they lived on the street. The children were poor and dirty and they had no home. They were hungry and some were sick. 
Here is a picture of George Mueller. He decided that he wanted to teach the children about God. But how could he teach so many children? He was alone. He decided to ask his church to pray for a home for the children, a home called an orphanage. An orphanage is a home, a place of safety for children who don't have a home and who have no parents. George knew that he would need a big home for so many children. He started to pray every day and ask God. He decided he would not ask people. He was going to ask God only. Do you know what happened? God answered his prayers. Do you see the children? They're poor and dirty. They need a home. They need love. They need to know about Jesus, how Jesus came to earth and he died on the cross and was buried and rose again for their sin. And they needed to know how to trust Jesus as their savior. Why did they need to trust Jesus? So that they could go to heaven. Every day, George, he would pray and read his Bible, and he would trust God that God would give him a home for the children. You know what happened? God answered. First, there was a woman. Do you see? She was an older woman. She was a Christian and God called her to move to the home for the children, to help take care of the children. The woman said, don't pay me. I refuse. Don't pay me. I'm serving the Lord. Wow. That was an answer to prayer. And then what happened? There was a man and a woman, they were married, and the two of them prayed, and one day, God called both of them to help at the home for the children, same as the other woman. The two of them, the man and the woman, they sold everything they had, and they brought their own furniture with them. And they brought it to use for the home for the children. George started to get really excited because God was answering his prayer. Remember, George never asked people. He only asked God. Soon what happened was more people started giving things, things for the home for the children, dishes, bowls, plates, cups, blankets for the beds, towels, clothes, new clothes for the children, many different things. Also, all of the people prayed and asked God to please give them a home. They needed money 
to buy a home for all of the children. And God gave them a home. They moved to the home and they set up the home for the children. They set up the kitchen and they set up everything. Then they waited and waited and waited and waited and no children showed up, none. So they were discouraged and they wondered, why did no children come? And then they realized, George said, we forgot to pray for children. So they all knelt down and they prayed, Lord, please bring the children for our home. And what happened? The children came, 30 children. Now they had a home, they had enough food, they had new clothes, they were happy. But the most important thing was that the children were learning about Jesus and the children were getting saved. So George and all the workers continued to ask God for the things that they needed. And God continued to ask, answer the prayers. God touched people's hearts and they gave things. They donated things for the home. But it takes a lot of money to take care of the home and the children, right? It takes a lot of work. But people always gave money. God used people to give money to help buy things for the home. Soon what happened was they needed new and more houses because there were so many more children showing up. Soon they had 150 for their home. That meant they needed new home for the children. And again, they prayed and asked God, we need a new home. And God gave them one home, two homes, three homes, four homes. Continually, continually he gave them what they needed. George lived until he was 93 years old. And when he died, there were more than 2,000 children living in the homes, five different homes. That meant that 2,000 children were learning about Jesus. Wow. Why did God give answers to the prayer? because George had faith. He decided he would ask God only. He would trust God and God honored that. Because the Bible says that if we ask God for anything and that thing that we ask God for, it's his will, God will answer. So go ahead, pray this week. Go ahead, pray, ask God for something. Trust God that he will answer your prayer this week. Okay? I love you. And Hi guys, I'm Miss Rachel here again. And this week, what is the treasure that we're learning about? We're learning about the treasure of prayer. And you might think, why do you have a cake here? And how is that going to relate to prayer? But I have this really, really cool cake. I call it my answered prayer cake. And I want you guys to be able to learn how to make one too. And this is really important for you guys to remember. 
maybe you've baked a cake before with your parents or maybe you've baked one with your grandma. Do you just kind of throw toss stuff in a bowl and bake it and you're done? Is that how you make a cake? Normally, what do you do? Normally, you have to follow a recipe, right? If the recipe says add two cups of flour, can I add one cup instead? Will it have the same results? Will it work? Maybe if it says two cups, what if I had seven cups of flour instead? Would that work? No, because we have to follow that recipe, right? And it's the same way when we pray. God has given us an explanation of how to pray and what he wants us to follow for his plans for our prayer life. And this is a really beautiful cake here. But how did we make it? First, we had to start you know, with a clean bowl, a clean measuring club. Did you want to use a dirty one? Would a dirty one work for a cake? Would you want to eat that cake? No, we want to make our cake with clean utensils. We want it to be clean. I don't want it to be dirty. Well, that's the same way when I'm praying. I want my heart to be clean. I want my fellowship with God to be pure. So that first means accepting him as my savior because we know Christ died on the cross for us to forgive us of our sins. So when we're praying and having that fellowship with God, our heart needs to be clean. Just like when we're making a cake, our utensils need to be clean. So we first have to be saved and accept him into our lives. But then we still sin after we're saved. So we need to ask God for forgiveness that he can cleanse our hearts daily. And when we ask him, he will clean our heart. The Bible says that he will create in us a new heart that he will clean it for us. The Bible says that in Psalms. So that is so important is for us to have a clean heart in our prayer life. Just like when you're baking a cake, you need a clean measuring cup. And then what else do we need? For a cake, you need eggs. You need these eggs to make a cake. Can you make a cake without eggs? No, it's not going to be moist. It'd fall apart. There'd be, it, the texture would be different of the cake. In our prayer lives, can we pray without obeying God? When we add eggs to cake, it gives it that flavorable taste. The same thing, when we're obeying God and following the priorities He has set up in our life, we become pleasing to Him. And that is so important to understand that we can't have a good prayer life without obedience. And then I have a tablespoon here. You see this? What do you think this is? It's baking powder. And what it does is it makes the cake rise. It adds that fluff. If we don't add this baking powder, our cake is not going to rise. It's going to stay this little flat. It'd be more like a brownie than a cake. So what makes the cake rise is that baking powder. The same way when we're praying, we need to have faith that our prayers are rising to God and that he's listening to us. That our prayers are going to heaven and that he is able to hear us. We have to have that faith. If we pray without faith, will our prayers be answered? No. We have to pray with faith. We have to have that trust in him. That he's going to be listening to my prayers. And that he's with us answering our prayers. So it's very important to have faith when we pray. And a very important thing. And very important ingredient in a cake is flour. Do you see this flour here? Flour is kind of like the bonding ingredient. It kind of holds the whole cake together. Will we have a cake without flour? No, we won't. And when we're praying, one of the most important things to remember is that we need to pray according to his will, not my will. A lot of times we pray and we say, Lord, I want this. Lord, I want that. But we need to pray that we would accept his will for our lives. Sometimes when we're praying, God says no. We need to learn to accept his will. Sometimes when we're praying, he says wait. And we need to learn to accept his will. And that's hard.
But that is so important. And if we're praying and we're following these rules that God has set up for us, He will hear our prayer. He will forgive us and cleanse us, cleanse our heart. He will help us to obey Him. He, are, he is hearing our prayer and He will hear our prayer because He keeps His promise and He says He will hear us. And that is our cake, our answered prayer cake. Maybe this week you can bake a cake with your family. And I want you to think about these ingredients and think about your prayer life that is so important that you even as kids pray every day because God answers prayers because he promised he would. All right, I hope you guys have a great week and I'm praying that you guys remember to pray yourselves and remember to send your verses in. Email those to us, okay? Bye, have a great week. Love you guys.